Hey everyone, we just converted our pole barn into something that looks like this, into something that looks like this. I haven't seen a ton of examples how this was done in other people's barns, so I thought I would share how we did it to maybe give you guys some inspiration if you're thinking about converting your barn. This barn was originally constructed to hold things like tractors and work supplies and construction supplies for a man who owned a construction company. It had no infrastructure whatsoever to hold any sort of animal. I think one of the most efficient things we did with this build was use the already existing structure here as a base to build around. Working off of these already existing barn poles saved us a lot of time because we didn't have to dig into the ground in order to make a structure to attach everything else to. We used these county line farm gates to build two and a half out of four walls of the structure. These county line gates are really versatile and easy to install. And there's also three other main reasons we use them. Number one being they come in a lot of different sizes. And this was great for us because we had different size openings in between all these posts. We have an eight foot one right here, a 12 foot one right here. And this space right here in the middle would fit a 10 foot gate. These gates come in all different sizes. And if we wanted to split this pen in half, we could easily add a 10 foot gate here to make two pens for either a cow calf or maybe a pig and a cow or whatever. Reason number two is that these are easily adjustable high and low. So we have pins here and here and down on the bottom here because we've already had to raise this thing up one time. We're trying to recreate Joel Salatin's deep bedding system on here. So for us being able to lift up the gate to match where the bedding is down here is pretty useful for us. We've already had to move this up about 12 inches because her bedding has gotten so high already. Reason number three is that we can just take these gates off completely. So when we need to get in here with the tractor and remove all this material down here, it'll be pretty easy and there'll be lots of working space for us. This is how the back portions of these gates normally sit, but there is another cool aspect of this that we use a lot. We're able to open these completely and create a whole nother pen over there so we can have access to the back of the barn for storage. We keep all her hay back there, plus some chicken tractors and other supplies. Okay, it's a new day. I got a new shirt on. I wanted the cow to be out of the barn so I could get a little closer to show you the rest of these things. This third wall back here is also working off of our main pole barn structure. We use two by fours to build a sort of safety net or safety wall in between the cow and the main wall of our barn. A nice aspect of this wall is that we were able to attach all her mineral feeders to it. Okay, that covers 3.5 out of four walls in our barn stall setup. Now this last 0.5 is pretty cool. Half of this wall is her watering setup. We made a V here that measures seven and a half at the bottom and 19 at the top. This is a big enough space for her to stick her head through and get water outside of the pen. It's really great to keep her water outside of the pen because I'm sure she would knock it over if we had to leave it in there. The other half of this thing is this feeder head gate setup. We built a simple head gate that measures seven and a half inches at the bottom and uses a lock pin system at the top. When she's just in the pen, we leave the head gate open. So that allows her to access her hay, which is outside of her pen. And that ultimately ends up saving us a lot of hay that she would lose if we had to just throw it in her pen on the ground. When we first put her in here, we just had this piece of plywood on the ground here to throw her hay on top of. She was able to access it and all that. Then she just ended up pushing it all away. So we built this hay box to keep it more contained for her. The head gate here is also supposed to double as her stanchion. We haven't actually done any milking yet, so we're not entirely sure how it's gonna work out. But I have two main ideas on how we might do this. Number one is to just leave her in the pen and milk with her head in the head gate. We can use the gate over here too as sort of a barrier in between us and her, or just something to just keep her attached to rather than having an actual stanchion set up. I'll probably need to build some sort of board platform to put in there because there's a lot of manure and wood chips in there and I don't want that getting in the milk when we're milking. My other plan is to lead her out of the pen, remove the hay box and stick her head in the hay gate going towards the pen. If we do that in this sort of setup, she won't have any sort of barrier on either side of her and we may need to end up building something along here, which I also have some ideas for, but we'll just have to see how she ends up milking and go from there. As I said before, we're trying to emulate Joel Salatin's deep bedding system. So with that in mind, we added a little infrastructure on the bottom of this pen as well. All the way on the inside of the pen, we added these two by eights right here, and that contains all her bedding and manure inside the pen. It also protects the main structure of the barn, which is really important when you're using this type of system because you have a lot of microbial activity composting away all the wood and material in there. If you got any value out of this video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. It really helps us out a lot. Feel free to ask any questions about this. I'd be happy to go into more detail on some of the aspects of this build.